Hello and welcome to Pennside Presbyterian Church. I'm Pastor Dave coming to you with a word of hope for today. To begin, we have an interesting hymn, Fight the Good Fight, by David Cullen. David. Fight the good fight with all my might. Christ is the strength and Christ thy right. Lay hold on life and it shall be thy joy and crown eternally. Run straight the race through God's good grace. Lift up thine eyes Seek Christ face life with its way before us shall lies. Christ is the path and Christ the prize. Cast care aside, lean on thy guide. God's boundless mercy. Thank you, David. Let us pray. More awesome than lofty mountains or rolling ocean are you, holy friend. More cheering than the sunshine through winter windows, fairer than springtime and more fruitful than mellow autumn, more abundant in mercy than the number of stars in the Milky Way, and as expensively loving as Christ crucified are you, God of all space, time, and eternity, lovelier than the faces of those whom we most cherish, more mysterious than the beginning of space and time, more irrepressible than even Christ on Easter morning, our God, God of grace, mercy, peace, and joy. There is nothing like you in the heavens above or on earth below. You always keep faith with your stumbling people and pour grace upon those who trust and serve you. Glory and honor, thanksgiving and worship shall be yours forever. Amen. We continue our journey through Ephesians with the familiar words of Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, the armor of God passage. Paul writes under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make him known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. 
This is the word of the Lord. And to prepare for today's message, I need a moment. Oops. The list of things we did not know before the coronavirus pandemic and we wish we did not know is long. The structure of a coronavirus cell. Am I the only one who really doesn't want to see that circular shape with those extensions sticking out? The importance of washing our hands. Yes, mom made the point over and over again, but now it feels so different, desperate. And when the soap dispenser is empty, anxious. And at the top of the list, PPE, personal protective equipment. As a hospice chaplain, I am trained annually in how to wear PPE. The online training was tedious until COVID made it vital. Put on your gloves first, then your gown, an N95 mask, and perhaps a mask over that, and finally, a face shield. Now we are prepared to provide care and prevent the spread of disease. This pandemic has trained us in all the uses of PPE, the way Mark Twain described being taught to swim. He was thrown into the Mississippi, and it was sink or swim. The Apostle Paul is speaking of a different kind of personal protective equipment when he writes, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Coping with the pandemic continues to be a struggle. The CDC is encouraging us to put our masks back on, and we may be looking at a booster shot for the vaccine. We're tired of this. We're sick of wearing PPE. When will life be normal again? Paul's insight clarifies our struggle. Our discouragement is not medical or scientific. It is spiritual. It is the great lie of the great deceiver. There is no hope. So what's the use? Paul encourages us to be prepared for the struggle, to put on the whole armor of God, to get our minds and spirits right, because the tempter is coming. St. Patrick's breastplate his prayer for protection, has influenced me greatly. This is the short version, and I encourage you to put Lorica by Voces 8 into your YouTube search engine for a marvelous musical meditation on this prayer. We'll have it in a moment. But this is his prayer. Christ with me. Christ before me. Christ behind me. Christ in me. Christ beneath me. Christ above me. Christ on my right Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise, Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, Christ in every ear that hears me. May God bless you and keep you. Stay well and go well with your personal protective equipment. Our prayer this week is a prayer for a hurting world written by Terry McDowell Ott in this week's Presbyterian Outlook. Let us pray. God of mercy, as wildfires and wars rage, earthquakes shake the planet, tropical storms threaten, we are at a loss as to what to say or do. In these moments of anguish and fear and grief, we turn to you in prayer, holy God, confident that you hear the cries of your people. As we send our daughters back to school, free to raise their hand in class, free to study and to speak, we pray for the daughters of Afghanistan. We pray for women shrouding themselves in fear, for liberties recently gained to hold despite the new oppressive regime. We pray for the Afghani men, fathers, brothers, sons, uncles, desperately seeking refuge for their families. We pray for all the Afghani people whose lives are trapped in a war zone. We pray for American troops, morally torn over leaving this country and their service behind. Lord, have mercy. 
Turn us from violence as a justified means for achieving our ends. Guide humanity toward your path of peace. In your mercy, God, hear also our prayers for Haiti. Why, O oh God, have the people of Haiti suffered so? How long, O oh Lord, must your people on this island endure tragedy after tragedy? We pray for this nation rocked by economic crisis, political assassination, a spiraling pandemic, and now an earthquake causing death and destruction. O oh God, we see the faces of those who have lost their homes and their loved ones. We grieve for your beloved ones and cry out on their behalf. Rescue the people of Haiti, God, desperate for help. Protect them from the next deluge heading their way, from the flooding and the mudslides. Guide us in global mission so our efforts might provide relief and support. Great God of all, you know us so well. You know our pain. You know our loss. You grieve with us as wildfires consume homes and COVID-19 fills hospital beds. You cry with us as tragedies plague your people. You work beside us in ministry and mission. God of grace, open our eyes, hearts, and hands to the movement of your spirit in this broken world. Restore hope to the suffering. Mend the hearts of the hurting. Grant us all the strength to support those in need as we forage for hope along the path of tragedy. May we bear the good fruit of faith, turning to each other and to you in love. Restore us, holy God, with your hope. We pray this in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Whom do we worship and serve? God and God alone. May we leave this time of worship today renewed in God's faithfulness, redeemed by Christ, restored to right worship by the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for watching.